Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The airports company South Africa last week released its first aviation barometer quarterly report on air passenger traffic data. Senior journalist Keith Campbell was at the launch and he joins me now. Welcome Keith. Keith, the first edition of AXA's aviation barometer covered two quarters. What exactly did this data reveal? Well, it revealed a significant increase in air passenger travel in the first quarter. In each case, um, the quarter was compared to the previous year's quarter. So first quarter of 2016, the first quarter of 2015, second quarter of 2016, the second quarter of 2015. And both had clear increases in passenger air traffic through AXA airports. The AXA aviation barometer uh, tracks uh, uh, passenger movements through the airports owned by AXA. It does not cover airports not owned by AXA, with a partial exception that uh, AXA can uh, record and does record the number of passengers um, that leave their airports to go to a non-AXA airport, most importantly Lanseria, and the number of passengers that arrive at an AXA airport from a non-AXA airport. But they don't cover figures, for example, for a non-AXA airport flying to another non-AXA airport, whether it's in South Africa or outside South Africa. But it, because AXA controls most of the country's main airports, this means that we've got data on most of the uh, air passengers uh, flying inside South Africa within the Southern African Customs Union region, which AXA calls regional traffic, and beyond that, international and inter intercontinental traffic. And it's, go it's up and up. That's basically what they found. So AXA CEO Bongani Maseko said that airport passions of growth uh, denied e economic logic in yes. the country. Um, could this partly be due to increased interregional um, traffic or um, what about international traffic? Well, both are increasing. Uh, there's no question they contributed. Uh, regional traffic, uh, uh, I'm being r rough here because we're covering arrivals, departures and two quarters, uh, but uh, regional traffic is up about 2-3%. Uh, international traffic up about 2-3%. The really dramatic increase though is in domestic traffic which is up about 7-8%. Uh, that was and that is I think uh, what really drove uh, Mr. Maseko's comment because normally worldwide there's a correlation between GDP growth, gross domestic product growth, and increase in air passenger traffic. I mean, this is highlighted, for example, by the giant airline makers, Airbus and Boeing, in, in, in their briefings and press releases. Uh, but in South Africa, within South Africa, taking domestic air traffic, the, there has been a total decoupling between the GDP growth and the air passenger traffic gro growth, as, as, as uh, Ms. Maseko pointed out. South Africa's GDP is effectively stagnant, but domestic air passenger traffic growth has increased quite dramatically. Now, AXA provides the statistics. They don't provide the analysis. So we're going to have to rely on economists and other analysts to try and explain why this decoupling is taking place. But it's a fascinating uh, piece of data that AXA have revealed. Uh, the, the barometer is, is a going to be a very important source of data for economists and uh, analysts uh, in the coming months and years. No question about that. Maseko also revealed that AXA was planning to start work on expanded passenger uh, terminal facilities at two local airports. Can you elaborate? Well, yes. Uh, it's Cape Town and Johannesburg. Uh, bad news for people using Cape Town uh, domestic. They're going to uh, expand it. Uh, AXA operates in five-year planning cycles. And, um, the, the latest one started last year, 2015-2020. And during this uh, five-year period, he didn't say when, they're going to start work on expanding the domestic terminal at Cape Town. And in Johannesburg, uh, and this is good news for people using Johannesburg domestic 
uh, uh, terminal. They're going to build a whole new terminal between the runways. So it's going to be a completely new terminal, a completely new building, uh, which will obviously be connected to the existing terminals by an under, underground tunnel. Uh, the interesting thing is they've been talking about this terminal between the runways for maybe 30 years, but the demand has not been there uh, until now to actually justify its construction. The reason is simple. They are already hitting maximum capacity during peak hour at both uh, Oatambo and Johannesburg and Cape Town uh, international domestic departures. Uh, there is a rush hour uh, at these two airports every morning and every evening. Uh, thousands of people catch flights to the other, from the one city to the other. And that rush hour is now causing congestion. They're, as I said, they're hitting peak capacity and they have to expand the facilities to handle the traffic. So while uh, those of us who are stuck on the ground are snarled up in the traffic congestion, the jet setters are snarled up in terminal congestion trying to catch a plane from between the, the country's two, two main cities. Thank you, Keith. That's the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.